Good morning. We'll get started. We're going to start seated today. So easy cross-legged seat, Sukhasana. If you want to prop the hips up, you're welcome to. Otherwise, just bringing whatever shin happens to land in front. Shift side to side a couple of times till you feel even in both sit bones, sitting up tall, closing the eyes. And you can rest the hands on the thighs. You can even slide. I like sliding them back and forth from the thighs to the hips a few times. So you can start to see where they want to settle. Palms can stay down, especially if you're looking for more grounding energy, or if you need to receive more energy, you can turn the palms up. And it's always nice to go back and forth several times between the two and see which one feels better. Then lift and spread the chest open, draw the shoulders away from the ears, lift the top of the head up, but point the nose straight forward and down a little bit. Then root down through the hips, hug the belly in, start to take a deep breath in through the nose, back out through the nose. Deep breath in through the nose, making it as long as you can. Slowly back out through the nose. Keep going on your own, ujjayi breath. And then blink open the eyes, walk the uh, left hand out to the left, and you can have that arm straight, or you can have it bent, whatever it really wants to do. Reach the right arm up and over, stay rooted in that right hip. You're just going for a side stretch. So if that right hip lifts, then you take away some of that stretch. If you keep it down against the mat and you reach those right fingertips away, pointing the chest forward, that's where you start to feel some side body opening. Same breath. Then you'll come back up to center, interlace the fingers behind the back and move both hands interlaced over to the left hip. So that same hip that we're, we were leaning toward, just wrap that right arm behind the back with the fingers interlaced, sitting up tall, squaring the chest forward. Shoulders draw away from the ears and then tilt that left ear toward the left shoulder and you'll feel a deeper opening on the right side of the neck and the shoulder. Breathe into that. Elbows are together. So it's like you're squeezing them in instead of flaring that left elbows flaring, uh, bring, coming in toward the body instead of away from the body. Then bring the head back up to center, release the arms down by the sides, inhale, reach the arms all the way up, exhale, fold forward, coming into a deep hip opening. So gentle to start, go three quarters of the way to start your practice and then close the eyes, let the breath take you the rest of the way, knowing that it'll take <clears throat> maybe five to eight breaths to go a little deeper. It's just to wake up the hips. You know, walk the hands back in toward the body, sit back, switch the crossing of the legs, bring the other shin in front, shift side to side till you feel even on the sit bones. And you'll start to walk that right arm out to the right, left arm reaches up and over. And sometimes the chest wants to go down toward the mat when we do that. So 
you might need to focus on bringing the chest forward. Make sure that left hip is rooted as you reach the left fingertips up and over. And we'll bring it back up to center. Interlace the fingers, go one finger over. So it's the way you don't normally go to first. And then bring both hands over toward the right hip. Hug the elbows together. Sit up nice and tall. Draw the shoulders away from the ears. And then you can start to bring the right ear toward the right shoulder. Still sitting upright, keeping the shoulders away from the ears and feeling lots of space and length in the left side of the neck, shoulder area. Then start to release that, come back up to center, reach the arms all the way up on the inhale, exhale, come into your hip opening. Seeing where it is on this side. Start to bring the hands back in. We'll make our way to hands and knees, tabletop. Once you get to tabletop, let's open up the hands and the wrists a little bit. So turn the, the fingertips so that they, the palms up and the fingertips point toward one another. So it's kind of a weird way to put the hands. Fingers are spread. And you're putting some weight on the hands because the shoulders are right over the hands. And you can start to rock forward and back a little bit. If you feel comfortable, you can stay right there if that's better. And you can even start to take some small circles, whatever you're comfortable with, circling the shoulders over the hands. And then go the other direction. And then come back to center, bring the palms back down to the mat. And now turn the hands back so that the palms are facing up, but the fingertips are pointing toward the knees. And you can do one hand at a time if the wrists are really um, tight or the forearms. If you can do both, try both. Make sure you're breathing, ujjayi, in and out through the nose, up and down the back of the throat. And then up to you, if you wanna start to add movement, it makes it a little bit more intense. So if you have enough here, stay here. Maybe you move forward and back. I'm barely moving. and then release that, bring the palms of the hands back down to the mat. And then here you can turn the fingertips out to the sides, leaving the palms down, or maybe you turn the hands all the way around, stacking the, the shoulders right over the heels of the hands. And then you can take cat cow this way. So reaching the heart forward on the inhale, lifting the tail and exhale around the spine. Then you're making sure that the weight's even in the hand. So if the thumbs are getting a little light, press those down. Plenty of space between the fingers so they're not touching. One more cycle forward and back. 
come back to a neutral spine, turn the hands back around. So they're underneath the shoulders, fingertips are pointing toward the top of the mat and then stretch that right leg back, keep the toes down. So you can firm up the leg with the toes on the mat first, then reach the right leg up to hip height. Keep reaching the chest forward, stretch that right heel back, keep both hands down on the mat, bring the knee to the nose. So scoop the belly around the spine, then extend that right heel back. And we're doing that a few more times. Inhale, bring the knee to the nose, exhale it back. This time, bring the knee into the nose, keep it there. See if you can lift the right foot up a little bit higher, the shin a little bit higher. Step that right foot forward to a low lunge. Mm -hmm. And then the left knee, this back foot, it's gonna turn toward the side of the mat. And you're gonna come up to like warrior two with that left knee down. So right leg's exactly like warrior two. Left knee is down, chest is facing toward the side of the mat. And then you can look over that right arm. Great. And then you can lengthen the hips, lift the chest. And you, could, you should be able to feel maybe a little bit more length in both sides of the waist. So it's easier to get the hips down and lift the chest and press the palms of the hand down. Then bring the right forearm to the right thigh. Lift the left arm straight up. So just side angle pose, not extended side angle. And then turn that left palm to face behind you, wrap the left arm behind the back. So maybe those fingertips sneak inside of the right thigh. They don't have to. Keep that right knee going toward the pinky toe side of the foot. You're opening up the chest and the shoulder, that left shoulder. Then reach that left arm back up, side angle pose, just straight up. And the right hand can come down inside of the right foot. If it feels like it's too much, grab a block or anything you have nearby. You can put a block inside the foot. If it feels like it feels pretty good, you can keep the hand down or maybe come up onto the fingertips. And then that left palm turns forward toward the top of the mat and you sweep that left arm up and over the ear. So with that right hand down, you can press the arm into the right leg and the right leg back into the arm. So they're pressing into one another that keeps the knee going straight forward over the second and third toe and allows you to open up the chest a little bit more. Right hip still right behind uh, the knee or the right sit bone behind the right knee. And then you'll come back to that warrior two shape, keep the legs, bring the hands down uh, in front of you, turn those right toes to face forward. So they're facing the side of the mat. You're coming into gate pose. So still on this left knee, walk the hands, uh, keep the hands actually where they are. So see if you can lower the palms down to the mat. And then from here, you'll reach that right arm up to the sky, opening up the right side chest. You'll thread the right arm underneath you, coming down onto the side of the face. So it's a deeper hip opening, left hand in front of the face, or you can reach the left arm up, turn that palm to face behind you and wrap the left arm behind the back. So same thing we did before, half bind, but maybe a little bit more intense with the legs. Left arm reaches back up if you have it behind the back. Bring the left hand in front of the face. Come back up onto both hands. Bring that right knee in underneath you. And then turn back to tabletop facing the top of the mat. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. If you want to put something under the knee, if it's sensitive, you can do that. Stretch the left toes back behind you. Fire up the leg before you lift it. And then lift the heel up to hip height. Keep both hands down on the mat for now. Take an inhale. On the exhale, bring the knee to the nose. Inhale, back, get long. Exhale, knee to nose. Try, try to keep the hips even. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bring it back in. Stay here. See how high up you can lift the foot, the shin, and then step that left foot forward. 
trying to keep this left knee stacked over the left ankle. And then you'll turn those right toes in to face the side of the mat and come up to warrior two. So you can windmill the arms up. It's warrior two with that right knee down. Lengthen the, the sides of the torso by lowering the hips and lifting the chest, but try not to lift the, the hands higher than shoulder height. So you can press the hands down a little bit and squeeze the arm bones in toward the midline so that you feel like you're using the arm muscles instead of the shoulders to lift the arms. Left forearm, left thigh, reach the right arm straight up. So not overhead yet. Keep opening the chest, keep moving that left knee toward the pinky toe side of the foot. Then turn that right palm to face behind you, wrap the right arm behind the back. Maybe the hands, the fingers go inside of the thigh, doesn't have to. Right arm reaches all the way back up. Left hand, maybe that comes down inside the foot. Fingertips, block, this side could be different. Press the arm into the leg, the leg back into the arm. Turn that right palm, top palm, to face forward and sweep the right arm up and over. So extended side angle. back up to warrior two, keep the legs. Then you'll bring the hands down in front of the chest, turn those left toes to face the side of the mat. So the leg is extended. And then from here, uh, right hand, right in front of the face, left arm reaches up to the sky, thread that left arm underneath you coming down onto the side of the face. And if it's too much for the hip, you just bring that left knee in underneath you and you're in, um, you're on both knees instead of the left leg extended out. Maybe the right arm reaches up. Maybe you turn that palm to face behind you and wrap the right arm behind the back. Make sure you're breathing and you can press into the outer edge of that left foot. Right arm reaches back up to the sky if it's behind the back. Bring the right hand down in front of the face. Press back up onto both hands. Bring that left knee back in. Turn to face the top of the mat. You're back in tabletop. And then from here, uh, hips stay over the knees the whole time. Start to walk the hands forward like downward facing dog. So you're reaching the palms forward and you can let the head come down between the arms. Some of you might be able to easily get the forehead to touch the mat. If that happens, great. If it doesn't, don't force it. So did some shoulder opening. Now we're trying to get into the upper back chest area a little bit more. Hug the belly in so there's not too much sway in the lower back. Then lift the head, bring the forearms down to the mat and keep the shoulders over the elbows, hands and forearms or shoulder width distance apart. Stretch the feet back behind you. You're coming into a forearm plank. So as you stretch the legs back behind you, you reach the heart forward. You're, you're still pressing down into the hands and the forearms quite a bit. And then as you stretch the legs back, make sure there's some engagement in the inner thighs. Think about spinning them up toward the sky. Lift the lower belly like it's going up through the sternum, through the heart. Maybe the gaze goes forward. And those outer hips, make sure that those are engaged too. Lengthen the tailbone toward the, the heels. And you're in that ujjayi breath. Scanning the body, seeing if there's anywhere where you've started to release, relax. Can you engage that area? And can you keep the breath steady? Slowly start to bring the hips down to the mat, working your way into Sphinx pose. Tops of the feet to the mat, lift and spread the chest, forearms and hands still pressing down. Widen across the chest, look down the bridge of the nose so you keep the back of the neck long. And if it feels like the belly's pressing into the mat, lift it away from the mat, 
lengthening the lower back. And then walk the hands back toward the lower ribs, setting up for Cobra. Pressing into the tops of the feet, inhale up, elbows in and point straight back. Exhale, release. Two more, inhale up. Exhale, release. Last one, inhale up. Exhale, release, back to Sphinx pose. Bring the forearms back down to the mat. Line up the shoulders so they're over the elbows. Press down into the hands, lift and spread the chest. Then look down at the mat, tuck the toes, fire up the legs, lift the hips up, back to forearm plank. Both heels go over to the right, lift the left arm up, forearm side plank. So that shoulder's pretty open. If it feels like the right hand wants to come in, you can bring it in but lengthen out through the heels, reach the heart forward. You can lift the hips up a little bit, reach that left arm up and maybe up and over the ear as you push the mat away from you. Forearm plank, take your time. Keep some space between the feet so you can bring both heels over to the left. Right arm reaches up. So one foot stacked in front of the other. Lengthen first, then lift the hips. Maybe the right arm reaches up and over. Heels are pressing away from you, hearts reaching forward. Back to forearm plank. One hand at a time, plank pose. Hands underneath the shoulders, downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. which the upper body is fired up and warm. So experience that in your first downward facing dog for this practice. Hide the heels behind the balls of the feet so you kick them out a little bit. See if you can lift the hips up and back a little bit more and hug the lower front ribs in. Then bend the knees, look forward, step, walk, bring the feet up between the hands, coming into a forward fold at the top of the mat. You can clasp opposite elbows, let the head and the neck go. Maybe you nod the head yes and no a few times. And switch the clasp. Hands come down toward the mat. Inhale up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. And then exhale, forward fold. Let's do that two more times. Inhaling up halfway. Exhale, fold. Last one. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Rise all the way up to standing. Bring the palms together overhead and down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold all the way back down. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, plant the hands, bend the knees as much as you need to to do that. Step back to plank pose. Lower down halfway chaturanga, cobra or up dog. You might be ready for up dog. We've done a lot of back bending, shoulder opening. Take it back to downward facing dog, but Cobra is always a fine alternative and builds the strength we need to be able to do up dog. Bend the knees, look forward, step, hop, bring the feet up between the hands, come back into your forward fold, inhaling up halfway. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, rise all the way up, bringing the palms together overhead and down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling up halfway. 
Exhale, hands down to the mat, step back to plank pose, lower down halfway chaturanga, keeping the chest open, rise up for your back bend. Exhaling back to downward facing dog. For you breasting your downward facing dog, press into the index finger, thumb side of the hand until you feel length go all the way up the insides of the arms and then widen across the shoulder blades. Neck is long. Bend the knees, look forward, feet forward. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up to standing. Hands come together overhead, down in front of the heart. <clears throat> Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, hands down to the mat. Step back to plank pose, vinyasa if you want one. Back to downward facing dog. Take your time. On your next inhale, lift the right leg up and back. Don't open up the hip, just keep it closed. Press out through that right heel, lifting the leg from the inner right thigh. And then bring the knee to the nose. So scoop the belly round the spine, stack the shoulders over the wrist. See how high up you can lift the right foot and the shin. Step that right foot forward up between the hands. Spin that left heel down flat, warrior two. Take your time. So noticing the difference with the back leg up versus the back knee down and your warrior two, can you get the same length that you did when you were on your knees to lengthen the hips down toward the mat and lift the chest up? So you want that same space on the sides of the torso and then keep opening the chest toward the side of the mat as you look forward. Keep that lunge in the front leg. Then we're coming to side angle pose, either form to thigh, reaching the left arm up, or maybe that hand comes down inside the foot, maybe on a block. And same thing here, if you have the hand down, press the arm into the leg, the leg back into the arm, you'll feel that the right hip shift right into place. And then reach that left arm up, turn that left palm to face behind you, wrap the left arm behind the back, open up the chest and the shoulder. Left arm reaches back up, side angle pose. Turn that left palm to face forward. Reach it up and over, extended side angle. Left hand comes back up, side angle pose. Left hand to the mat. Walk the hands over to the left. So you're turning the right toes in, you're facing the side of the mat. And then bring the heels in, toes out just about halfway. Bend the left leg straight in the right. So you can keep both feet down with the hips high and the hands underneath the shoulders. This is a great place to be. If you wanna go deeper, maybe those right toes come up and you, come into a side lunge. So that left hip is working. You have the, the left heel down on the ground. Bring the hands in front of the heart if you're taking this option, if you wanna go deeper. And it's like that right heel sliding in toward you, not pushing away from you. Then you lift and spread the chest, keep pressing into the hands to help you do that. Hands come back down to the mat if you took that option. Shift back onto both feet, facing the side of the mat, and then turn the toes forward, coming back into a lunge, facing the top of the mat. Left knee comes down, untuck the toes, reach the arms up, low lunge. Left arm reaches forward, right arm reaches back. So open the chest to the right, but try to keep the head over the hips. So when we come into twist, we wanna lean forward, reach back with that right arm. You can even look over the right hand if you're feeling pretty good here. Dig into that right heel, spread the arms apart, hug the belly in. 
then windmill the hands down to the mat, tuck those back toes, step back to plank pose, vinyasa optional on the way to downward facing dog. Inhale the left leg up and back. Get that leg strong before you do anything with it. Then inhale, knee to nose, scoop the belly round the spine, lift that foot up as high as you can, the shin up as high as you can, then step that left foot forward. Warrior two, spin the right heel down flat, heel to heel or heel to, heel to arch if you wanna take a wider stance. Windmill the arms up, open the chest toward the side of the mat, Find that deep lunge in the front leg, but make sure you can still root down through the outer edge of the back foot. So both legs are strong. And sometimes it feels like you can get access to both legs. If you think about squeezing the feet together a little bit, you'll get that engagement because sometimes we just put all the weight into the front leg and it's just that left quad pressing down. But when you slide that left heel back a little bit, you'll feel the hamstring and the calf turn on. And we wanna use the whole leg in our warrior twos. Side angle pose. You can start with forearm to thigh, reach the right arm up if it feels like there's enough space. Left hand down inside the foot, maybe on a block. Get that engagement between the left arm and the left leg if the hand's down. Turn that right palm to face behind you. Wrap the right arm behind the back. Half bind. Right arm reaches back up, side angle pose. Turn that right palm to face forward up and over the ear. Root down through that right leg to reach those right fingertips up and over. Keep the lunge in the front leg, reach that right arm back up, right hand down to the mat, walk it over to the right, turn the toes to the right, facing the side of the mat. Heels in, toes out, just about halfway, bend the right knee, straighten the left leg. Keep the hips high with the hands down and both feet down, or maybe skandhasana, you can come into a lower variation if you feel open enough for that. So left toes would come up, you're pulling that heel in, maybe you have the hands together in front of the heart. Right heels down on the mat. Hands come back down to the mat, shift back onto both feet, Turn the toes to the top of the mat, runner's lunge. Set that back knee down, untuck the toes, reaching the arms up, low lunge. Right arm reaches forward, left arm reaches back. Find that twist, see if you can keep the head right over the hips. Reach back with that left arm, maybe even look back at that left arm. Spread the arms out wide. Left knee still going straight forward, don't let it come with you. Windmill the hands down to the mat. Tuck the back toes, lift the back leg, step back to plank pose. Vinyasa, if you want one, to downward facing dog. Few breaths in your downward facing dog. And then bend the knees, look forward, bring the feet forward up between the hands. Inhale up halfway, exhale fold, chair pose, bend the knees, reach the arms up, Utkatasana. Make sure you can see all 10 toes. If you can't shift the knees and the hips back, then look up and forward all the way up to standing, hands come together, down in front of the heart. Interlace the fingers behind the back, open up across the chest and the shoulders as you point those knuckles back. Then put a little bend in the knees, fold all the way forward, Uttanasana, knuckles go back behind the head, 
legs are pretty straight. You can shift the weight into the balls of the feet. Heels are lighter. Hands come down to the mat. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, bring the hands down, step back to plank pose, vinyasa, or skip it. Right leg goes up and back. Knee to nose on the inhale. Step that right foot through to the top of the mat, warrior two. Side angle pose. You choose where you want the right arm. Wrap that left arm behind the back, half bind. Get the hip in line, that right hip, legs strong. Reach that left arm back up, then over the head, extended side angle. Left arm reaches back up. Bring that left hand down to the mat. Walk the hands over to the left. Right toes turn in. Then heels in, toes out. Bend the left leg, straighten the right. Skandasana. Any version that feels like it's adding space to the body and isn't adding any straining. Come back up onto both hands, turn the toes to the top of the mat, runner's lunge, set that back knee down, untuck the toes, reach the arms all the way up, low lunge. Left arm reaches forward, right arm reaches back, reach back, hug the belly in. Windmill the hands down to the mat. Tuck the back toes, lift the back leg. Step back to plank pose, hold plank pose. One form at a time, forearm plank. Separate the feet so their hip width distance are a little bit wider. Both heels go over to the left, right arm reaches up, forearm side plank. Push the mat away from you, lengthen the tailbone toward the heels. Maybe that right arm goes up and over. Back to forearm plank. One hand at a time, plank pose, down dog. If you really want a vinyasa, you can take one or skip it. Next inhale, left leg reaches up and back. Knee to nose. Step that left foot up between the hands, right heel goes down, warrior two. Side angle pose, right arm reaches up, chest opens up. Turn that right palm to face behind you, half bind, wrap the right arm behind the back. Right arm reaches back up to the sky, reach it up and over, extended side angle. Root down through that right leg, open the chest, keep the left arm pressing into the left leg and vice versa. Right arm reaches back up to the sky, bring that right hand down to the mat, walk it over to the right. Heels in, toes out, bend the right leg, straighten the left, skandasana. Hands back down to the mat, shift back onto both feet, walk the hands to the top of the mat, finding a lunge, set that back knee down, untuck the toes, reach the arms up. Right arm reaches forward, left arm reaches back. Find that twist. Windmill the hands down to the mat, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, step back to plank pose, forearm plank. Feet a little bit wider, both heels over to the right, lift the left arm up, forearm side plank. Maybe the left arm goes up and over, push the mat away from you. Stay really strong, hug that core in, get longer as you bring the tailbone toward the heels. Back to forearm plank. One hand at a time, plank. 
down dog, optional vinyasa. Feel free to skip it. That was a lot. Good. Bend the knees, look forward, bring the feet forward. Inhaling up halfway. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, sit back, come into Utkatasana chair pose. All the way up to standing, hands come together down in front of the heart. Interlace the fingers, one finger over, open up across the chest. Maybe the palms of the hands come closer together, maybe even the heels of the hands. Put a little bend in the knees, start to fold over the legs and you can straighten the legs as much as you want as you fold down. Move the shoulders away from the ears, keep those knuckles reaching back. Hands come down to the mat, inhale up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana, then exhale, fold, step back to plank pose, any way you want, back to downward facing dog. Right leg lifts up and back, knee to nose. Right foot steps through, Warrior two, left heel down, windmill the arms up, Virabhadrasana two. Right hand down inside the foot, left arm reaches up, side angle pose. Take the half bind. Then reach that left arm back up, side angle pose. Take it to extended side angle. Turn the palm to face forward. Sweep the arm over the ear. Left arm reaches back up. Left hand to the mat. Walk the hands and the toes over to the left. Heels in, toes out. Bend the left leg. Straighten the right. Skandasana. Lifting the chest. Hands come back down to the mat, turn the toes to the top of the mat, runner's lunge, set that back knee down, untuck the toes, reach the arms all the way up, low lunge. Left arm forward, right arm back, find that twist, spread the arms out wide, keep the head over the hips, then bring the hands together right in front of that right shoulder like prayer. Start to lean forward, hook the elbow outside of the right thigh. And then you can lean back a little bit. You're lifting the chest, but you're trying not to jam that elbow, the left elbow into the thigh to find the twist. Hug the core in, use that to open up the chest. Then hands come back down to the mat, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, step back to plank pose. One forearm at a time, forearm plank. Hold forearm plank. We're coming into dolphin. Hug the belly in, lift the hips, start to walk the feet in. Your shoulders are warm. We've been doing it the whole practice. You can look forward at the mat, especially if there's lots of space between the head and the mat. If you're too close, then you can just look back at the feet and that's totally fine. If you're looking forward, you can play with lifting the right leg up. And if you wanna play with your forearm balance, maybe you play with kicking the left leg up. But you wanna keep the forearms and the hands really strong, pressing away from you as you reach the right heel up. Right leg comes down if you lifted it, start to walk back to forearm plank. One hand at a time, plank pose, downward facing dog. Stay here for five breaths or take a vinyasa. Just the other side, inhale, lift the left leg up. Bring the knee to the nose 
and step that left foot all the way through, right heel down flat, warrior two. Side angle pose, left arm down, right arm up. Take the half bind, turn that right arm back behind you, maybe reach through the inside of the thigh. Right arm reaches back up, extended side angle, reach the right arm up and over, root down through the right leg, keep opening the chest up. Then right arm reaches up, bring the hand down to the mat, walk the hands over to the left, left toes come in. Then bring the heels in, toes out, skandasana, bend the right leg, straighten the left. Find some lift in the chest wherever you are. Keep the legs active. Hands come back down to the mat, shift back onto both feet, turn the toes to the top of the mat, Runner's lunge, set that back knee down, untuck the toes, reach the arms all the way up. Right arm reaches forward, left arm reaches back, open the chest. Core hugs in. Then keep opening the chest to the left, bring the hands together in front of that left shoulder, start to lean forward, keep the chest open, lightly hook the elbow outside of the thigh, Maybe you can open up the chest a little bit more. Keep that left knee going forward. Left hip isn't swinging out to the left. Lengthen the spine on the inhale. Twist on the exhale. Then hands come back down to the mat. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. Step back to plank pose, forearm plank. Start strong in the forearm plank. Press down into the hands, the forearms, hug the belly in, legs strong. Start to lift the hips up, walk the feet in until you can't walk them in anymore. Push the mat away from you. Maybe that left leg lifts up. Maybe the right leg tries to hop up. But hands and forearms are really strong. Hips are or uh, that left hip isn't opening out to the side. Left leg comes down, back in dolphin, walk the feet back to forearm plank. One hand at a time, plank pose, downward facing dog. Last opportunity for a vinyasa if you want one, although that was plenty, I've been skipping them. Maybe you just stand downward facing dog and recover here. Then bring the knees down to the mat, child's pose. Big toes together, forehead comes down. I'd recommend reaching the arms back behind you for this one since we've been on the shoulders and strengthening and opening them. So backs of the hands would come to the mat on either side of the feet. Then bring the hands down in front of you. Come back to tabletop. Bring the knees all the way together. Tuck the toes underneath you. Come back to child's pose. So reach the arms back behind you. Forehead comes down, but grab the soles of the feet. So knees are together, toes are tucked. You're grabbing the heels of the feet. You're going to keep the head down on the mat. Lift the hips up and you'll feel a nice opening across the upper back. So rabbit pose. And then you can start to release that. You can untuck the toes. You're just in child's pose, backs in the hands, rest on the mat again, foreheads down on the ground. Bring the hands underneath you to lift yourself up. Come to seated on your mat. So once you get to seated, we'll come into an easy cross-legged seat. I'm doing left shin in front, but it really doesn't matter which one you do in front. Just don't do the same side twice. So you can start 
in Sukhasana, although the hips are pretty open today, it could be a good double pigeon day. So you could grab this uh, front foot and start to stack it on top of the knee. So you want ankle and knee stacking on both sides, which means the feet go out pretty far, toes point forward. You can bring the hands back behind you, press the knees away from you. And if it's too much for double pigeon, then just stick with Sukhasana and you just bring that front foot down again. So maybe you stay here. If you feel like there's more room, you could start to come forward and walk the hands forward. Then you just breathe. Let the head and the neck go. Close the eyes. Start to walk the hands back in, coming back up to seated. If you're in double pigeon, just move that top foot down to the mat, bring the hands back behind you, and then bring the feet wide to the outer edges of the mat and let the knees fall side to side like windshield wipers. And we'll come into the other side. So cross the legs the other way, other shin in front. Find yourself even on both sit bones. Maybe you stay with that front foot down, or maybe you play with bringing that front foot so the ankle's on top of the knee, and then make sure the bottom ankle is right underneath um, the other knee so the ankles and knees are totally stacked. Bring the hands back behind you. Press the knees away from you. Keep the feet active so you're pressing down into the outer edges of the feet. Stay here or start to walk the hands forward and fold forward. Hands will come back in toward the body, bring them back behind you, move that top foot down to the mat if it's lifted, and then bring the feet wide, move the knees side to side, back to those windshield wipers. And then you'll come to seated with the legs extended out in front of you. Move the flesh out from underneath the sit bones, reach the arms all the way up. Fold forward over the legs, Paschimottanasana. Hands can come down to the mat. If the feet are right there without you reaching, you can grab the feet, or you could even put a block behind the feet if you feel like you have a little extra space. Close the eyes, let the head and the neck go.
and you'll slowly start to make your way back up. Option to take a seated meditation or traditional Shavasana coming onto your back. If you have props and you want to use them, make yourself comfortable. Something to cover the eyes is always really nice too if you're taking Shavasana. But either staying up seated and coming into your meditation or lying back, closing the eyes, giving yourself some time to settle in. And slowly start to find some movement in the hands and the feet. You can place the hands on the body. Bring the left hand on the heart, right hand on the belly. You can blink open the eyes. And you'll reach the arms overhead, waking yourself up again, finding a nice long stretch on your mat. Walk the feet in, bending the legs, and roll over onto your right side. Use the hands to bring yourself up to an easy cross-legged seat, coming into your seated meditation. Spending time in this moment. Bring the hands together in front of you, bowing the head to honor and acknowledge your heart and spirit, as well as everyone around you. Bring the head back up, blink open the eyes, namaste. Thanks for joining live or doing the recording. Hope you all have a great day.